Okay, we are back. We are in chapter seven. This is example one. And in chapter seven, we are looking at transverse shear, which is the shear that comes from bending in a beam. Okay, it's the imbalance um, when we're looking at that uh, stress distribution of bending on one side with the other. And if I were to put these into resultant force, then I can see I'm going to have some sort of a, a shear uh, imbalance and that's going to be that transverse shear that we're looking at okay we also because we are looking at beams all of our examples we're also going to be looking at that normal stress mc over i which is from chapter six okay so these are our equations we have a 14 foot long simply supported timber beam carrying a six kip concentrated load mid span the cross sectional dimensions are shown at section AA, so here's section AA, determine the magnitude of the shear stress in the beam at point H, point H, and at point K, point K. Then determine the maximum horizontal shear stress that occurs in the beam at any given location. Determine the maximum tension in the beam at any location. So I know if I'm looking for shear stress, VQ over IT, VQ over IT, VQ over IT, bending. Okay, so when I'm coming here at A, then if I want to know what's going on at A, then I need to come all the way through my system so that I can find the shear stress at A. And here we have our shear stress at A. Now, the nice thing, too, is that our maximum shear stress is going to occur where we have our maximum shear. And because I have a point load, I have three kips up over, six kips down, so I'm back to negative three kips. So our maximum shear stress is everywhere we are along the beam, and that load that we're going to be using is uh, uh, three kips. Our shear is going to equal three kips. Here our shear is gonna also equal three kips, which is super nice. When I do the bending, that's going to come from my bending moment, and it's very clear that our maximum moment here is 21 kip feet. I can also see all of this is above my zero line, so it's all a positive moment, and when I have positive moment, I have compression tension. So we've got everything we need from our equilibrium. Many times you will not be given an equilibrium information other than the beam, and you will be required to draw your own shear moment diagrams. The next thing after equilibrium that we usually look at is section properties, okay, section properties. Um, this instance, if I am looking at my moment of inertia, it's pretty easy. It's BH cubed over 12 because it's a rectangle. So I have six, and I have a height of 15 cubed over 12. So let me get my calculator out. 6 incher, 15 incher cubed times 12 divided by. And I get that my moment of inertia about that z axis is 1687.5 inches to the fourth. Okay, inches to the fourth. I don't know why I'm doing this in red pen. Okay, so now we need to get started for each of the individual portions of where we are looking. If I want to know at AA, okay, um, at point H, then let's look at at H, which is along that AA line. I'm going to use VQ over IT, and my V is three kips. I get that from my shear diagram, okay. My I is 1687.5 inches to the fourth. I need my thickness. Well, if I'm looking at H, here is H, okay, my thickness is parallel to the axis that I'm bending about, so I can see that that thickness is six inches. And now I need to find Q. Q is the area beyond, either above or if we're below down here, below. It's away from the centroid, okay? So when I look at this area, I have a base of six, I have a height of three, and now I need my moment arm. I know the moment is going to come right in the middle of this three inches. So I have three inches divided by two. If it's 15 inches tall, then we are 7.5 inches, half of it to the top. 
if I'm three inches back down, that means that this distance right here is 4.5 inches just to get up to that fiber. So when I'm looking at Q, I'm going to have base times height, that was three inches, there's my area. My moment arm is 4.5 just to get up to that area, plus three divided by two to get to the centroid. So now when I set up my shear stress, at AA and specifically at point H, okay, I'm going to have three kips, VQ, six times three times 4.5 plus 1.5 is times six, divided by I, 1687.5 inches to the fourth, six inches. And when I multiply all of that out, 3 enter, 6 times, 3 times, 6 times, 1687.5 divided by, 6 divided by, I get 0 0.032, and I need to remember that was in KSI, 1, 2, so it's going to be 32 PSI, and that is going to be my shear stress at section AA at specifically point H. So now we want to look at point K, which is also on the same section. I'm going to use the same equation, VQ over IT. Again, my shear is three kips. I'm getting that from my shear diagram. And my I, we already found, is 1687.5 inches to the fourth. My thickness, so this time I'm looking at my thickness at K. So I can see that my thickness right there is still six inches. And now I need to find Q. Q is the area beyond. So again, if this is 7.5 inches all the way down and we're one inch up, then I know this distance has to be 6.5 inches. So as I'm looking at Q, I have a base of 6, I have a height of 1, and then I'm going to come down 6.5 plus, I have to go to the centroid here. So I know this little distance is 1 inch divided by 2 for a half, so plus 0.5. So now we can work this one out, and I get my shear stress at K is 3 kips times 6 times 1 times 7, that's my Q, divided by 1687.5 times 6, and let's work this out. 3 enter, 6 times 1 times 7 times, 1687.5 divided by, 6 divided by, and I get a tiny number, 0 0.0124 KSI, which is going to be 1, 2, 3, 12.4 PSI. Now, if I want to find my maximum shear stress, okay, that is going to occur, again, VQ over IT, I have to find my maximum shear, which we already found was three kips, okay? My I is still 1687.5, okay? So now when I'm looking at this, let's just draw the little segment down here. I know that the centroid is there, and I know that it's going to be 7.5 inches up. I just opened another eraser. So I have 7.5 inches up, and the maximum traditionally occurs at the centroid because we have the most area above or beyond that we're looking at. So here's my thickness at the centroid, okay? So I have a thickness of 6 inches, Q, area beyond, times the moment arm back down, okay? Q equals a base of 6, a height of 7.5, and then to the midpoint is 7.5 over 2, okay? So when I draw this out, I know that for a rectangular shape, because the geometry is not changing, my shear stress in PSI is going to look something like this. So I am looking for right now this maximum shear stress. I've already found at at point H, which is three down. Okay, I've already found at point H, which is three, this is three inches down, that I am at 32 PSI. 
I also found at one inch, one inch down, and because it's symmetric, I could also go one inch down here, that this value is 12.4 PSI. So I'm expecting a larger value. So my maximum shear stress is three Q over I times T. Three, enter. Six times 7.5 times 7.5, enter. Two divided by times 1687.5 divided by six divided by 0 0.05 KSI, which equals 1 to 50 PSI. So now I can put a 50 PSI right there for my maximum. So we've now sketched that little tidbit there. And I now need to find that bending stress. Well, I know that it's MC over I. When I look at my cross section, I know that for bending, that C, C to the top, C to the bottom, that the maximum actually occurs at the top and the bottom because we're the farthest away. With a positive moment, I know that we're gonna have compression going into tension, PSI. So I'm already aware of what it's going to look like and I know because of symmetry that both my compressive and tensile stress should have the same value. So what is my moment? My moment is 21 kip feet. I have to remember to multiply it by 12 over one, 12 inches per foot. And since I'm using PSI, I need to make sure that one kip is to 1,000 pounds, okay? C, C to the top or C to the bottom, it doesn't matter, they're the same. It is 7.5 inches to the bottom. And then my I was given up above. 1687.5. So my stress is going to be 21 times 12 times 1,000, okay, times 7.5 inches to the bottom divided by 1687.5 inches to the fourth. So I get a compressive and a tensile stress because of symmetry. 21 enter 12 times 1,000 times. 7.5 times 1687.5 divided by, and I get 1,120 PSI. So I know that I'm at 1120 and 1120 for both my compressive and tensile stresses. And there we have it.